Okay, welcome back to Let's Boldly Go. Um, after sitting in orbit for, what, five, five more hours in-game, um, we're, we're coming up on Mugshell's, uh, wreckage. Um, I think at like a hundred kilometers we can actually see it, uh, which is nice because it gives us a distance. Um, so I think after like a couple more orbits, we will be, be near. Because there is like 65 kilometers. And as we sweep around here, we'll get a little closer. <coughs> I'm thinking it's like 15 or 20 kilometers closer per orbit. Um, I figure I'd cut back in a little early just so you guys can watch the approach because that's kind of cool. Okay, right, so coming back around again. Yeah, it's a little less than 20 kilometers per orbit. Um, What that means is, after the next orbit, we'll have to bring our periapsis up a little so that we don't overshoot, because that would be embarrassing. Um, oh, let's just uh, uh, I, I got this mod called Persistent Rotation. And I forgot to turn it off there. That's, uh, but what it does is, it'll if you have the SAS on, then it'll keep your rotation relative to whatever you're orbiting, or even another body. So if like you put a space telescope into orbit and you want it to look at the moon at all times, it'll do that, and that's really awesome. Um, and the plus side is, it'll work even under time acceleration. Um, so, you can... <coughs> and another side effect of it is, if you enter time acceleration under rotation, I think it will actually keep it persistent, but I haven't tried that, so... Let's try that. So... I see it. This rotating. Wow, okay, yeah. So, that's interesting. Um, oh yeah, and if you have like a big space station that's spinning, it'll actually tell you what the relative artificial gravity would be, which is kind of cool. Okay, so yeah, at this point, we need to start worrying about our, uh, <coughs> our um, approach. So we need to, first off, be pointing retrograde. And another side effect of this mod is that, um, I can no longer cheat and cut rotation by time accelerating, because um, it's a, an easy way to save a little bit of power uh, on the SAS if you're running out. Um, <coughs> which I have been known to do on occasion. Uh, okay, so here, FOFs is um, point retrograde, and fill this up a little bit. I can't remember exactly where. Oh god, I am. Wow, I'm dumb. We want to be pointing prograde, not retrograde. Uh, making good use of this very scant fuel reserves we have. But yeah, I, I don't remember exactly where her periapsis is. I want to say 73 
kilometers. That's probably good. Um, the, the important thing here is just to be really careful. Um, and uh, you can see her inclination isn't quite right because she's kind of oscillating above and below us uh, slowly. So, because <coughs> normally we would, uh, as I mentioned before, we would want to line up on our ascending and descending nodes so that that's not an issue. Um, but like, like even here, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Because by bringing our orbits closer together, our relative velocity has decreased. Um, which, if we had our uh, tracking center upgraded properly, we would be able to... Okay. Um, so at this point, we're actually getting farther away from each other. Um, because if I could target her vessel, then we could actually view the relative velocity. Um, and uh, it would be easier to cancel it out. Because that's what a rendezvous is, is just you get close enough um, and then you cut any relative velocity so that you um, so that you're basically in the same orbit at the same point in the orbit <coughs> yeah. okay, so at this point especially without um, like without having any Uh, w without having the, the relative information, this is going to be hard and tedious. Um, basically, I'll have to like time accelerate and then figure out a relative motion and then burn to counteract that while simultaneously trying to get closer but without picking up too much speed because I don't want to overshoot. And also, I don't want to run out of electricity, because we forgot to put solar panels on this. Um, and at this point, I should probably just be using the RCS anyway, because um, it'll provide easy lateral control. Okay, and I forgot I can actually pull up the Neville HUD here, which will help with getting aligned properly. Alright. So, what I want to do is just keep this number from decreasing too quickly while keeping this from going up too quickly. Or just keep that dot still. Uh, This is actually looking like it's going to be better than I was expecting. Especially given that we can't lock onto her ship at all. Um, okay, so we're coming in at well, like 5 meters per second. So I'm just going to accelerate up a little. Um, <coughs> probably lose that at this point. Since we are within visual range. I mean, normally in this game, uh, rendezvous are done, or can be done pretty hastily, uh, especially if you have a lot of fuel to spare. But given that we don't, um, 
we were actually taking this in a rather realistic fashion. Because um, in real space programs, uh, orbital rendezvous, like with the like the ISS resupply missions, those are done very slowly. Um, like, like excruciatingly slowly, and then even once you get like near the station, just docking with it takes a ridiculous amount of time, just because they don't want they don't want to add any unnecessary speed to the station. Because like if you're coming in really fast and then you dock with it, that momentum is transferred into the whole station and could potentially deorbit the station if you're like really like if you're really not paying attention and it all builds up over time. Okay, well that's annoying. Our our uh little bit of information there disappeared. But we can see that it looks like a uh, hitchhiker crew storage part, or whatever it's called, um, and what I'm hoping here is that we will actually be able to control Shell and transfer her over, because otherwise we don't really have any way of doing this. Um, okay, perfect. So, uh, experimental engineering group. Somehow you guys lost Michelle up here. I don't know what you guys have been doing. But, uh, big strong man Jebediah is here to save the day. Um, so yeah, this is the view that Michelle has been treated to for the past, uh, ten and a half hours while we were slowly creeping up on her from behind. Um, but now, she's free to say goodbye to this piece of trash and say hello to this much more handsome piece of trash. Um, I believe I mentioned that Meg Shell and Jeb have some, some history that uh, is why he's the one who came up to rescue her. Uh, like, they don't really get along very well. Like, it's not necessarily good history. <coughs> but nonetheless, he's here, and she's happy, and he's happy. Look at that. Look at that smile. Oh, man. <coughs> okay, so now, um, now we are free to get the heck out of Dodge. I, I have no idea if this part is going to stay here when we, uh, deorbit, or like, like once we finish the contract, I don't know if that's still going to be there, but it would be kind of irresponsible of us to just leave it there. So, uh, what I'm going to try to do here, because we have all this monopropellant still in the tanks, is I'm going to try and use, uh, I saw this move in a Scott Manley video once, but I'm gonna use these fins to push this wreckage while we're deorbiting. Um, because that's awesome if we actually pull it off. I'm not the the best with the RCS controls. I'm kind of rusty at this point. Um, 
And now that we have Michelle in here, we can actually use her uh, uh, her much more useful IVA view to uh, help get this one lined up. Because Jeb's pod is pretty useless when it comes to this. This is on top of me being kind of useless when it comes to this. Oh hey, we could have taken an EVA report. Finally actually caught one of those science alerts. But we have more pressing matters to attend to. And by that I mean a very stupid idea that could potentially get us killed um, if we screw it up badly enough. <coughs> Speaking of screwing up, I uh, guess we forgot to start the stopwatch again. Okay, so we now we're now pushing on this thing. So I'm gonna throttle up ever so slightly. All right, we are now pushing this piece of space debris out of orbit. So I'll just throttle up a little more. Try and keep the line. Throttle up a bit more. Uh, I have no idea where our periapsis is. It's now within the atmosphere, so either way, this thing's going down. And just ease up. Okay, so it's the rest of our fuel. So we've got monopropellant too. So I want to get this down to 30 kilometers, because I think at that point it'll auto destruct. Um, I think it's 35 kilometers for something to be destroyed, like if we're not watching it, because um, uh, interestingly enough, um, if you like, if you have a ship or something in orbit, and you're just watching it in the tracking station, it can actually pass through the atmosphere without it affecting the orbit. Um, I think at least, I don't know, they might have actually fixed that, um, since it's kind of something that they should have fixed, but, uh, I, I don't actually know if that's still a thing. Okay, so at this point we can jettison this tank, um, okay, so now we are set for re-entry. Michelle and Jeb are both very excited uh, to finally get back on the ground after quite a bit of time in orbit. Um, I'm excited to finally be back on the ground because this mission took a bit longer than I would have liked, although it did end up going better than I was expecting, uh, to be honest. <coughs> And so, okay, so we do have a heat shield on here. We've. Oh, yeah, that's the monitor propellant. Um, so, yeah, at this point, we'll just accelerate down to the atmosphere. That. That's weird. Um, I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, hopefully those won't hit us. I actually, oh jeez, um, I don't actually know how much of a risk there is of those hitting us. Uh, hopefully not a lot. Um, <coughs> jeez, okay. Since these parts will have more drag than us, they should start pulling back. Like you see, this one is starting to fall behind. Um, that one, I guess, is shooting ahead. I don't know what's going on there. 
Uh, I guess I'm going to start trying to slow our descent a little. And actually, since we have this mono propellant, um, we could even pull our periapsis up this way if we want it. Since we've got all this fuel and it's. Oh, yeah, okay. So I, I had been looking at the wrong one anyway. That's the debris periapsis coming down. <coughs> So yeah, we're, we're, we're it's all good. Um, I'll actually, point forward then. <sighs> okay, so her record just coming down. That's finally out of our way. Um, turn up my CS. I do wonder if I should cut out part of this in the recording, because um, it's not exactly going to be quick, and yet again we're, we're probably, me actually, we might come around to the other side. If I finagle the RCS enough. Nah, whatever. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll cut back in when we're near the ground, because this should go well enough, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, we actually came in a bit harder than I was expecting, um, and to be honest, if we hadn't come in over the water, or whatever... We're coming in over some really low area, and if we had come in over mountains, we probably would have died. Um, cause we, like, it, it was pretty rough. Uh, we actually used a bit of the ablator on the heat shield, which doesn't usually happen. Um, I think it's cause we still have all the monoprop in here and it's kinda heavy. Um, even though I was, like, I was burning it on most of the final descent, uh, it was still kind of scary, and it's part of why I don't coming in over, the, I don't like coming in over the nighttime side, because I can't see what's below us until it's pretty much too late to do anything about it. Um, so that was kind of scary, but... We, we we made it in the end. Um, okay, so Mig Shell's record just destroyed. I guess we could have tried to reclaim that for a little extra cash, but oh well. Oh, she's actually part of the crew now. That's cool. Um, uh, sweet, so we did actually recover our stages. Awesome. Okay, so despite any scariness, this mission was definitely a success. Um, pretty sure we've done these before, but I'll take what I can get. Um, Oh, geez. So we're basically on the other side of the planet from where we want to be. Uh, so we're probably not going to get a whole lot of funds recovered on this. But that's not the important part. Mink Shell came back alive. And we now have... I guess we now have a fourth crew member, which is neat. Um, oh, and she leveled up too, because she was in orbit. I don't 
No, what? Ah, cool, she's another scientist. Um, that could actually be handy. Okay, so she is pretty courageous and not dumb at all, so... Yeah, she's actually better than Bob at this point. Um, oh, it actually tells me what their their level effects are. Okay, so Jeb and Valentine are both level 1 now. Um, since she leveled up, we actually get slightly better returns. That's cool. Um, so what that means is we should start sending her er, and Valentina. Um, like, like when we go to the moon, we're going to want both of them so that we can max out our, our scientific stuff. Um, this episode has probably gone on way too long. But, I mean, given how important it was, I think that's okay. And this debris didn't deorbit, so let's watch that happen. Because we can. And just as an added bonus. <coughs> um, and then I will actually end this episode. Because that needs to happen. Um, You know, this could actually take a while to, uh, to do its thing. Because we're basically going to have to watch the whole thing at four times time acceleration. But, whatever. I mean, do you guys really care? Yep, okay, so, we're just barely going to not leave the atmosphere, and then come back down for a fiery demise. Uh, okay, I guess I should think of something to talk about during this. Um, also, I can turn off the HUD to make this prettier. Okay, so... I had mentioned previously wanting to do, or maybe do, other games. <sighs> and I still haven't really come to a decision on that. I definitely want to get the forest at some point and play that, because it'd be cool. Um, I have Space Engineers, which is... Oh, hey, there's a Space Center. Um, it's kind of a, like, Minecrafty sandbox survival game in space, where you're an engineer. Um, like, you... The, the ships are all block-based, um, but it's pretty complex. Uh, and then there's, like, asteroids and stuff, which are, which are voxel-based. It's so, like they're deformable and you can blow them up and stuff. And I think pretty soon they're actually adding planets, which will be neat. Um, and there is a, uh, like a survival sort of mode in that, which I haven't tried out yet. I've, like, I've only done sandbox stuff, so that could be interesting. Um, there's their other game, Medieval Engineers which is much newer in development, so they probably don't have a whole lot to do. But I, I could do like a one-off, just showing off some of the stuff. I haven't actually played it yet, but you can, you can mess around with a lot of stuff. Um, <coughs> there is another one that I forgot about. Um, I don't really remember, because there's... Like, I don't actually own that many games that I think would be good for this sort of environment. Um, like, I have a lot of single-player stuff. Because uh, I could do... 
like a Dark Souls playthrough. I think I'd mentioned that. Um, that could be cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I own a bunch of games that I, a lot of them I don't really play all that often. So if anyone wants to see something be played, and I own it, that could happen. And if I don't own it, but I don't want to own it, that could happen. survive, or you're not going to overheat, but, uh, I mean, like, this thing's not going to survive, it's just going to hit the ground, but there's definitely a possibility that a piece could come off and survive, because that does happen, especially at how low of a terminal velocity we're going to have. Oh, right, well, no, never mind, we, I forgot about the parachutes, that's the whole point was so that this would survive. Okay, well then, never mind, because this is going to just get recovered slowly, so, uh, you'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. I hope this isn't too long of an episode, and if it is, I hope you don't care, and if you do care, then sorry, I guess. Bye.